we've got the car up on the four post now. I'm going to start working on the drive shaft situation. Get that sorted out so I can get them sent off while we're working on some other bits and pieces. So I got it on the four post because we want to be able to drop the weight of the car on the suspension. It's just a lot easier doing it on here because you can just lift the car up and down without worrying about falling off the lift, jamming transmission jacks and stuff under the wheels. So the plan is I got a set of original 306 drive shafts. They aren't actually the ones out of this car, but they're out of something so they'll fit. And we've got the original Honda shafts out of the EP3 Civic. So initially I'm going to chop chop the EP3 shafts long and then cut the original shafts long and I'm going to fit them to the vehicle hoping they'll slide inside of each other if not we'll have to just butt them up but I think they will because the 306 one's luckily a hollow and the jack one's are solid so we should be able to then slide them inside of each other set the car down at ride height set the inner um, inner CV at its midpoint and then scribe a line around the shaft which should give us a happy line then I can confirm that by lifting and dropping the car so full droop on the suspension, make sure we don't pull out of the cups and under full compression, make sure it doesn't bottom out, which I'm sure it won't. Um, it's just a lot easier to do that on here. Obviously, I should note this is not This is just to get the measurement. I probably will just tack weld them to give an example shaft, um, but then I will be sending those two welded together shafts off to a a professional company to get them to machine them out of correct material and probably heat treat them everything they do to make them right all right so i cut these two shafts now and clean them up a bit what i've done i've left that outer joint together for a minute because we don't need to touch that it's the inner one that we're worried about i've just shined up these shafts slightly so i can tap them together shined up the end of that one cleaned all the grease out off the end of that shaft and also just cleaned it out of this cup so we can see what we're doing without a chronic mess um, anyone that works with drive shafts knows what I'm talking about. So I'm going to put this shaft in the, slide this in here now. Like, like I said, the, it's quite convenient. The Honda one is solid and the Peugeot one isn't. So we can actually slide it in, fit it to the car, get the length we're happy with, mark it, and then I take it out and I'm just going to tack weld it around the outside. And then I can strip this CB joint down, knock this joint off the end, and then I've got the shaft that I need replicated. Okay, so I just temporarily put the ball joint bolt back in. So we've got that drive shaft just slit, slipped in a position now. Hub nut is on and tightened down to make sure we've got the shaft pulled right out. And you can see now that gives us a little bit of adjustment of where we position the length of the shaft. So first I'm going to put the wheels back on, drop the car back down, just have to roll it forward and back just so it settles into its normal ride height position. And then we can make sure we set this where we want it. What I'll probably do is run it, mark it on its outer extremity, mark it when it's bottomed out, and then we'll weld them halfway. And that will give, give us the measurement then to have some proper shafts machined. Well, I didn't video any of that, but I've just done the passenger side as well. So if I just turn the wheels around, you'll be able to see a bit better on this side because there's not that splash guard in the way. So you've got the two halves of the shafts slid inside of each other, all the ball joints are back in. Obviously it's just free to go wherever we want it at the moment. Right, so you've got it back on the two posts now. The next project is going to be trying to sort out the exhaust or the downpipe and the screamer pipe as well. So we're going to actually reuse the exhaust that's already on the car because we had you know, Sam had a fairly decent two and a half inch exhaust system on the HDI. So it seems no sense replacing all that for the sake of it. So we're going to join into it there under just underneath the gear stick where there's an existing V-band on the on the rest of the exhaust. So what I've already done now is underneath, I've just tacked together a new pipe under the car to join into this downpipe here. So we're kind of doing it in reverse to normal. We're going to start down there and, and come up and, and meet up here, which in some ways makes it a little bit harder, but we need to make sure it lines up down there and I find it easier to do it that way. So we've got come up through the tunnel there now, 90 on the end. Got a adapter flange here that bolts to the turbo that ends on a three inch V-band. So we can adapt to that. So we're just basically cutting some pieces uh, to, make, well, to fill in this gap here now. Uh, I'm gonna come around straight and then down slightly. We've gotta bear in mind the gear linkage cables have gotta go through there as well. So we wanna keep up above them. So we're gonna cut some tube now and just get tack everything up first, make sure we're happy with it and then final weld it at the end. So I've just finished welded that downpipe now. 
you see I've got the turbo out and before I fit that again I want to get the gear linkage cables in because you get a lot better access here with the turbo out and obviously the downpipe out so I've just been doing some measuring uh, we've got an aftermarket shifter for it that Sam's got came with a bracket for the cables and new cables so I've just got a piece of string here now that, that I've got set to the length of the cables because I'm trying to find a place to go through the bulkhead obviously I want to go through somewhere where it's hopefully out of sight inside um, but we've got to be a little bit careful because the cables are a set length and if we go I think if I go the most direct route they're going to be too long and they're not particularly flexible so we're not going to have anywhere to get rid of the slack because there's a fairly straight shot here and a fairly straight shot inside so I think what we're going to do is come through around about there which will put them at an arc as they go in and according to my measurements that should then hopefully end up with the cables reaching and fitting quite nicely without any ridiculous bends to try and get rid of the slack inside or out here because there isn't really room to do that and the cables won't like that very much so I've just measured inside 20 centimetres across and I think we want to go around about there which is actually conveniently where there's a nice flat area on the 306 chassis anyway so we're going to measure up now and get a hole saw and bang a couple holes through there and see how it looks I haven't actually mounted the shifter or nothing yet I've just been inside here now and I've torn out the trim from the center taking out the factory gear shifter and just positioned this aftermarket job so the center of the of, of where the shifter sits is exactly where the OEM one was you see the cables come in the front there um, so the aim is to come in it's going to be around about there with the cables and hopefully they'll just sit underneath the dash fairly out of sight and um, as to what we're going to do about this I'm not quite sure I'm assuming clearance the uh, factory center console and just make it fit as best we can okay so I've got those two holes put through the bulkhead now just temporarily fitted those two cables so we can get the length sorted a couple temporary grommets and that should be well out the way of the downpipe and the turbo and also plenty of clearance for the for the old heat reasons and they're a little bit longer than they ought to be really I think inside just see there the way one's bent around I'm just going to have to make a loop around the centre console or something. I need to make that loop as like as long as possible to avoid it being too sharp of a bend. I think we should be able to go in and around, but sweep into the other side of the gear stick rather than coming in from the passenger side. So I'm going to get the turbo refitted now, bolt that on. Still obviously no gaskets or anything because all of this has got to come out again yet when we refresh the engine or the other engine and then eventually it'll all go back together with everything new. Um, so I'm just going to bolt, bolt turbo in, bolt the downpipe and all up, connect the original exhaust up, just make sure again everything's got clearance and then we can move on to the next thing. So I've just fitted in that blank and plate and adapter plate for the gearbox so you can see from underneath it's just blank right over that factory hole. So I've just picked up the original bolt holes that held in the original shifter so you could, this could all be unbolted, removed and you could put the original setup back in again. At the minute actually nothing is modified here at the back at all. You can just see the exhaust there from underneath as well. Okay, so sorry if these videos are jumping around all over the place. I'm, I'm just picking up the camera as and when I remember, and I feel like I'm probably not capturing half of what's going on. Uh, so we've got all that downpipe and stuff in. I'm a little bit stuffed there until I've got a wastegate to do any more to that. So I'm just eyeing up cooling stuff now. Um, I'm hoping, well, my plan is to use the EP3 like original Civic radiator. A uh, couple reasons. Number one, because it just, I find when you, when you transplant engines, if you keep the original cooling package with the engine, everything just works better. Um, number one, you can use all the factory hoses and it kind of everything is in the right place. And if you put a Peugeot radiator in here, the hose comes out the bottom because it used to go around the back and you've got to adapt it. And it's just, I, it just if you can, it, it's a lot simpler to keep the radiator in. So you can see I've got it just sort of dropped in there. Now it's a bit tall. It's narrower than the Peugeot one, which is fine. If anything, that's actually beneficial. Gives us loads of room to put some intercooler pipes through so we haven't got to mutilate the car too much. Um, so I've made up, you can just see at the minute I've got the radiator sat. I've just made some plates up and put some holes, well, put a hole saw for it for the original Honda mount which used to sit in the lower cross member in the Civic. I was hoping that we could get away with mounting it like this. Um, the bonnet does close right now but if I put a radiator cap on it it's going to touch the bonnet 
Um, there is some clearance to be had in the bonnet, but I don't really want to do that. Um, so I think the radiator is going to have to go down. So what I'm going to have to do is either slightly move it back and drop these brackets and sink the radiator behind the cross member. Um, but the problem with doing that, which brings me on to the next job, is we're going to have to fit up all the water pump bracket and the alternator and everything, because I don't know where that's going to sit at the moment. And the further I go back with the radiator, it's quite likely I'm going to get interfering with that. So next job is pull the radiator back out again. I'm going to bolt, just temporarily bolt all that lot up. Then we can sit the radiator back in and see how much room we've actually got to play with. Because you can see where I've got that radiator sat there now. That's not a lot of room. And I'm fairly confident that's going to be a problem. So I imagine what we're going to end up doing is probably having to section the original cross member and then weld in some plates to sink the radiator down into that cross member. And then the, uh, the 306 factory wiring harness runs in inside that cross member. So we'll have to try and do something with that as well. But that bridge can be crossed, but we just need to be sure the radiator can go there. Um, obviously the top mounts are really easy. Typical jab, just a rubber bush with a plate or whatever will make it so it all bolts on easy. And it would sit there quite nice, but I just don't, I don't think there's going to be room for it like that. So we're going to have to see what we can do. So we'll get that all out again and go from there. Right, we've got a bit of a change of plan here now. So we've got this kit here that relocates the alternator down where the uh, air conditioning compressor used to be. Because the alternator originally would sit there, which really protrudes out in the way. And more, more problem being the tensioner setup on the OEM setup is up high here, which I could make fit, but it's going to get very clustered in that area. And the alternator down there, it's out the way gives us a bit more room up the top. Uh, problem being, obviously, as you can tell, if you look down from the top, the alternator now protrudes actually slightly past where the 306 cross member was. So my original plan of sinking the radiator down behind definitely isn't going to work. And not only that, but we've got the thermostat housing here, which has to have a fitting on the front of it with a pipe on it, obviously. And it's all, it's all getting too close. So I'm going to have to bring the radiator forward back to where it kind of is meant to be. So the only way to do that and get it down, you know, I've had to cut us off, I've sectioned out the original cross member here now. I think this camera's getting a bit steamed up here. So I've sectioned out that original cross member. I've just got a piece of steel clamped in here at the moment. I'm gonna see whether that's low enough. I'm hoping that is then gonna give me enough drop to get that radiator cap on without touching the bonnet. If so, we can plate all this in, section out here for the lower radiator hose and the temperature sensor in the radiator and we'll plate all this in, make it strong again, and then put two holes in that, as I did before these plates. This was the original idea. So we're gonna transfer them into the relative position here. I'll, I'll still try and get the radiator that uh, back as far as possible. That gives us as much room as possible then in front of it for us, for example, the intercooler and oil cooler and stuff like that. Um, the incidental advantage of this Honda rated is it's quite a bit narrower than the Peugeot one, so it's going to give us loads of room around the outside. Right, so we've got that cross member finished off and splashed some paint on it. You can see that I've just got that stock radiator sat down in those rubbers at the bottom. And we've just made up those two brackets in the top, which holds the radiator in nicely. And that's actually the factory rad hose on the top. And we've got clearance down the bottom for the alternator, not a lot, but enough. And we've just sectioned a piece out the front of that back cross member for the lower rad hose. So it's sitting in there quite nicely. Loads of room for fans on this side, or potentially this side. Obviously we've got to get an intercooler and oil cooler in there as well.